Albion's Women in Leadership series of interviews. I'm Victoria Scott, Head of Marketing for Albion Capital, and I'm with today Helen Davis Parsons of Dormy Care Communities. Um, we're really excited about this series of interviews that we're doing to celebrate the brilliant women that we now have at Albion running our investee companies. And I'm really delighted to say that now we've got quite a few of you. So it's really, really moving in the right direction. I'm hoping that the chat today will shed some light on what made you, Helen, an entrepreneur, the experiences that you had of starting your, your business and growing it and some, in, some sort of insight into what you learned along the way. We've got a quick fire round at the end, which just helps us understand what sort of leader you are, what sort of styles of leadership you've um, you've experienced that have worked with you and your team. And hopefully you'll be able to share some sort of pearls of wisdom to anyone else who is moving on a similar sort of path. So first of all, just to fill everybody in, I'm going to give a little bit of background on you, Helen. This is a bit where you everybody sort of cringes, but it's uh, it's just easier for me to say. So Helen Davis Parsons is Chief Executive Officer of Dormy Care Communities. Helen's been a registered nurse for over 35 years and uh, having worked at large care home providers for many years, she wanted to set up her own company to provide the quality and high standards of care that she's passionate about in well-designed buildings that could provide a home for life. Helen founded Dormy Care Communities in 2015 and has since that time been successfully operating and opening and opened four care communities in the UK. Each of the communities is really embedded in its local community and this is an area that Helen's firmly believes in. Um, if you back the local community and you do it through employing local people, using local suppliers, buying food and produce, and as well as investing in local community groups through sponsorship and support, then you are really part of the community. Helen's also passionate about delivering incredibly high standards of care and support and truly believes that older people can continue to live an enriched and rewarding life after moving into a care home regardless of uh, physical or mental health. Um, if that wasn't enough, in her spare time, she's a board member of charity group Lynnetley Mind, hope that was pronounced correctly, and is a magistrate um, in South Wales. Dormy Care Communities, as I said, operate and own four luxury care homes. They're based in Hampshire, Herefordshire, Dorset and South Wales, and they all offer residential nursing and dementia care. So I hope I got most of that right, Helen, and I pronounced Lynnethley correctly, um, or adequately, shall we say, probably. Um, so if you're happy, let's get on with the show and let's first consider your career route. Um, so why did you decide to found Dormy Care? Uh, well, I didn't naturally fall into the independent care sector. I uh, trained as a, a nurse in the NHS in the 1980s and was very passionate about the uh, specialty of uh, intensive care, which I went into not long after qualifying um, and really thought my career would stop in intensive care. Um, and also teaching, I always had a passion for teaching. Um, the NHS at the time was changing um, rapidly with uh, you know, lots of initiatives coming in, not least the whole uh, nurse training um, that changed from a sort of a, an apprenticeship type model whereby you had work-based um, placements to a university model which really didn't uh, appeal to me um, and it was it was actually on a whim that I um, found myself leaving the NHS um, when I worked night duty um, one week of nights in every four um, doesn't do your uh, mental health or your work-life balance any good and um on a whim, I decided um, I'm going to leave this and, and look for something else. So, um, so I did. And I actually went off and became a, um, a representative, a, a rep, a sales rep, for want of a better word, in a, a company that took me into care homes, um, which I'd never, ever set foot into, I have to say. Um, this was in the sort of mid 90s, early 90s. Um, and what I found was actually that there was such a variety of care homes available at the time, ranging from the new builds that were quite innovative at their time uh, to the traditional um, converted houses. Um, and I found myself being pulled more and more into this 
field of, of nursing and really thought, mm, maybe I'll give this a, a try. So I did. Um, so I went into um, staff work as, as a staff nurse in a, in a care home um, for a big company and then worked my way up to, um, to actually, by the end of it, I became a regional director. Um, never had any clue about business. I was a nurse and never saw myself as a businesswoman. But actually, what I found is that I, I could see things that could be done differently and possibly could be done better. Um, and it just means thinking outside the box a little bit, because when you're in that situation, you can think on your feet. You haven't got to go through layers of people to make decisions, which you know are the right things. And obviously, um, you know, with, with experience, you learn more and more. And certainly from a business perspective, I learned huge amounts from people I worked around. And I was very much like a sponge in those days where I would just, you know, take on board everything that was being said to me um, and then work the rest out myself. So when I got to a point of having worked in one company, more or less, for 20 odd years, I thought, hmm, maybe it's time for me to do something different. And that's when I started thinking very seriously about having my own care home services um, and setting up my own company. And I was lucky enough to, um, to be supported by Albion and its partners. Um, and that's where Dormy Care Communities came from. And I vowed that two things I vowed at the time was one, whatever I did, I was going to do to the best of my ability. And also that I was only going to be working with people who I respected and people who I liked. Um, and that's exactly what I've done. I've got um, a massive team of great people who really embody the, the whole ethos of what Dormy Care stands for. Wow, quite a journey. Um, <laughs> you, if you can recall that first year of um, setting up the business, oh. what do you think was the most unexpected thing about it? Oh, gosh, that's a big question. I think <laughs> the, the most unexpected thing was um, actually how easy it was going to be. Um, and I know that sounds probably a bit remarkable, but I suppose I built up, um, you know, the whole enormity of running my own company and, you know, having to deal with um, different aspects of the business that I'd never had to deal with before. Um, so I knew it was going to be a huge learning curve. But what I hadn't anticipated was really that it all just blended into one. And with having the support network around me that I did, both with um, Albion and, you know, the, the support of the board, particularly, um, you know, again, I was in a very big learning environment. Um, and every single person who I came into contact with was more than happy to help. Um, and I think that for me was was reassuring that I was probably, as I saw it, a woman in a man's world, but actually I'm not, you know, I'm not one faint hearted at all. But um, yeah, I suppose my confidence grew. Um, I saw myself as being very much, uh, you know, a big part of the whole success of Dormy. And, and that gave me even more encouragement to um to go on and, and do what we've done so yeah that's, that's fantastic actually because more often than not everybody sort of says oh gosh it was just so much more scary than I thought it was going to be but it sounds as though you'd already got sort of all your ducks in a row and then and lots of really really good people around you so and, and tons of experience in the bit that mattered I guess is probably really really core to that do you think that over that period of time you changed very much going from, you know, somebody that was that was sort of doing it to somebody that was running it? I no, I don't think it did, actually, because I think in the size of the business that I have, the one thing that drives you forward is actually leading um, at the front. Um, and I think demonstrating to people, and I've always lived by this, is that I would never ask somebody to do anything that I'm not prepared to do myself. And I think in the care sector, that is hugely important because, you know, people might perceive you that, you know, you are the chief executive. And regardless of the fact that I'm a qualified nurse, they seem to forget that, you know, I've got two hats. I've got my business hat and I've got my nurse's hat. And what I always say is my nurse's hat is very firmly stapled to my head. The business hat comes off and on um, as and when needed, but that that lends itself beautifully to gaining the trust and gaining the respect of the whole workforce. And, you know, they're not in any way um, 
you know, thrown by me being in the homes. They don't behave any differently. They just see me as being one of the team, but yet they know that, you know, ultimately dormy care is, is my business. And, um, and they totally respect that, which is, which is great. It's exactly how I want it to be. That's fantastic. And I mean, you, it sounds as though being part of a, a team is really, really important to you. Um, being the leader of that team and having to focus and prioritise and sometimes make difficult competing decisions. How do, how do you find that? You know, how do you find having to say no to, you know, to certain things when you know that it would be nice to say yes? How do you, how do you manage your priorities? I think everybody, um, you know, would always like to say yes, but I always balance it with it being what is the right decision rather than what's the easy decision. And saying no can, you know, often be difficult. People don't like to be told that they can't do something or that, you know, something that they bring to you isn't possible because what I would always back my no answers up with is a very valid reason. Um, and I think as, as, you know, as a leader, you have to balance the, 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 you know, the business, um, the business with the, the, the question, I guess. And it, and it is all about doing the right thing for that particular person, perhaps, or because of the situation at the time, um, but also getting a consensus. And I think if you, if you sell your point properly, that's well researched with good grounds, then very often people will go with, with the decision. Very, very rarely do we have conflict in the senior team because you know we have discussed things and we do things collaboratively. And yes, ultimately, you know, I am the final decision person. Um, but generally it's a consensus opinion that I then say, yep, or you know, no, we can't do this because. Right. Um, with that team that it sounds as though you work incredibly closely with. What do you think they would say is your superpower? <laughs> Energy, passion. Um, I am passionate about what I do. I generally am enthusiastic. And that is the one thing that they will always get from me is, is that enthusiasm and optimism, I guess. You know, we've, we've been through the hardest year ever in care homes that I can remember. And that's, you know, 30 years um, and I think throughout all of it, the one thing that we have done um, is, is pulled one another along. We've pushed and pulled all year. Um, very often, you know, one or other of us has had a bit of a wobbly day. But when we have, we've been there to pick that person up. Um, I can probably count on one hand how many wobble days there have been for me. But everybody knows it because, you know, whilst I'm very good at putting, a, you know, a work mask on most of the time, the, you know, I'm human at the end of the day, and it has become overwhelming at times where I've just thought, I can't do this anymore. But um, but they've always, always been there and, um, you know, pick me up as I do them. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's what uh, what they'd say. You should <laughs> ask them that question, actually. <laughs> um, is that, is it, it sounds as though you've almost sort of already answered this because it sounds as though you've got a big team around you. But within that team, would you see that there's sort of like – one particular wing man or wing woman that that really um, has strengths that you need in order to make you and the whole team more effective? Mm. I think, yeah, it's always important. You have to have a wing person, I would say. Um, I think I have different wing people. Um, <clears throat> we are mostly a female team. So of the, the senior team, there is only two men in that. And whilst we are a relatively small team, um, you know, two men in, a, in amongst 10 others, um, they are in the minority. But I think what we get, you know, and from my wing people is they each complement one another in different ways. So we're all very different. <clears throat> but, you know, one person will tell me, you know, stop being ridiculous. The other person will say, well, they'll question it more. So it's having that person to bounce off. And, and I know, you know, who to go to to bounce certain things off. Um, and, and I'm quite selective, really, with, with who I bounce what off. Sounds as though you've got a, a lot of very, very strong wings in that mix. We have. Yeah. A whole flock, in fact, a whole flock. Yeah. Brilliant. So um, I'm, I'm very conscious of time, and I do want to move on to the fast fire round, um, which we've sort of geared up as a would-you-rather series of options. 
Um, and the things that you know you would find it, find yourself as a leader um, experiencing. So we're just going to sort of jump into it if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so would you rather hire for high IQ or EQ? EQ. Would you rather get things done or get things right? Get them right. Do do, do feel that you can elaborate. If okay. You <laughs> I don't want to sort of completely. I just said quick fire. I took it literally. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. That's absolutely fine. I just sort of felt that you wanted to sort of say something more. Then. <laughs> Would you rather hit your numbers but mistrust your team, or you trust your team and miss your numbers? That is actually a tough one. Um, I think you have to have a blend of both of it, um, because whilst I do trust my team, there are certain situations where you know maybe they they've taken their eye off the ball for whatever reason and missed something. So the numbers have been missed, but equally I do know, and especially over the last 12 months, you know, trust is everything. And unfortunately the numbers have had to come a second place for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, would you rather see the big picture or solve problems? I am very much a big picture person. I think you can, if you go in and just try and solve the problems, you miss so much. And I think if you look at the bigger picture, sometimes, they, well, not sometimes, I believe there's always more than one way of solving a problem. If you look at it on a big picture type of uh, frame, then you can usually see things differently, perhaps. And maybe what you thought was a problem actually isn't a problem. Or isn't the actual problem that you thought it was? It's slightly a different problem. Yeah. I, I totally understand that. Um, would you rather have inconsistent creative genius in your team or accountability and consistent results? Again, you have to have a blend of both, I would say. Um, you know, we, we work with people, so we're not little widgets in a box and you can't put people in boxes so you need a blend of of people who are absolutely on the metal with regards to you know compliance and accountability but you also need the bigger thinkers to 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 bring you back down to earth and and realize that uh, you know this is about living lives not just uh, ticking boxes yes yeah, so, uh, and with a team like yours where you've got lots of wings lots of different wings with different skill sets you've probably possibly got a bit more luxury to to have both maybe Indeed. so would you like to learn a new spoken language or learn a computer language oh my god foreign language new language every day me and computers absolutely no way i've always got a man that can or a woman that can in the background <laughs> with regards to computers because it's not my not my forte whatsoever <laughs> Which language would it be? Just, just out of interest. Well, interestingly, um, I'm, I'm speaking to you today. You can probably see my daffodil because it's St. Yep. David's Day. So, Deeth Goyal Dewi Hapis. I am oh, okay. a fluent Welsh speaker. Um, wow. And there are so many languages that are akin to, to Welsh, but I am um, ashamedly, I am very, very naive in them. So, the one language I would love to, to learn. Um, to speak properly, I would say, is, is French. Definitely French, French yeah. Well, I, I would say French is a darn sight easier than Welsh in terms of pronunciation. So yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. So would you rather be poor and work at a job you love or rich and work at a job you hate? I have never hated a day of my work life, I have to say. So I've never been particularly rich. And if I ever end up rich, it's because I've always done a job I love. So um I think that's the ideal, but I would far rather be poor and do something I love than, uh, than the opposite. It doesn't bear thinking about. We spend all of our lives in work, or certainly I do, so uh, <laughs> yeah. a very miserable place to be if you're in it more than, uh, more than it has is. to be. Certainly is. Would you rather have a pause button on your life or have a rewind button? Um, I think I would rather have a pause button, yeah. Um, I don't know. Would I like to be in my 20s again and have, you know, God, the fun and the, you know, the, the carefree days, I guess. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's always a case if you knew then what you know now, would you have done things differently? I don't believe that you should ever look back and regret anything. And I certainly don't regret anything in my life. I think I've learned hugely. And, you know, you make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But 
as long as we learn from them. I think now would be nice at my age to put the pause button on and think, right, let me just have a couple of years of breathing space and then let's pick up. Just, yeah, pause would be nice. What about never get angry or never be envious? Um, I think never be envious. I think if envy is a, it's quite a nasty trait to have. Um, I think getting angry is natural, depending on how you manage your anger. Um, and as long as it's managed effectively, it can actually be quite uh, therapeutic. Yeah. <laughs> and what about never age or never need to sleep to function? <gasps> never age, just a bit late for that. But I think um, never sleep, yes, uh, that would... Um, it is a bit of an interruption sometimes, and I must I do struggle with sleeping. Um, not because I don't need it or um or definitely could do with it, but certainly it's um yeah, if you're in the middle of doing something you suddenly think oh, I've got to stop because it's such and such a time. Yeah, I'd rather not sleep than uh not age. Uh, what about die in 20 years with no regrets or live to a hundred with lots of regrets? No. Living to a hundred, unless I'm fully fit well mentally and physically that doesn't appeal to me in the slightest but if I died in 20 years yeah I'd be happy with that as long as I went happily. I guess you see quite a lot of of centenarians or whatever they are um and uh, it's it's nice when they're well isn't it it's not so nice. yeah yeah indeed and then and finally on this on this bit and then we'll get some advice but would you rather be in history books for something terrible or be completely forgotten? after you die it's a bit grim, <laughs> a bit grim isn't it? I wouldn't want to be remembered for something bad I certainly wouldn't want to to go down in the annals of uh, you know being this terrible person I'd rather just die and be forgotten um most of my friends would say that you know one scene never forgotten in my case so I'd like to think that that wouldn't be the case anyway so yeah <laughs> finally Helen um would there be one single piece of advice that you'd like to give your younger self that you can share with our would-be entrepreneurs? I think there's there's been so much advice that I've been given over the years, but I think the one thing that sticks in my mind is, uh, is my dear old dad always used to say to me, you're as good as anybody, if not better. And I think for me, um, having, you know, that sitting on my shoulder, as a woman, I think we always tend to maybe be a little bit reticent perhaps in pushing ourselves forward when, you know, perhaps we we are as good as, and we definitely are as good as, um, you know, men in our fields, if, like, if not better, yeah. Um, but it's just having that confidence. And I think, I just wish I'd had more insight and more confidence at a younger age um, to actually go out and, and do it rather than just go with the flow. Not, not that I've been you know, terrible at uh, at stepping outside and doing my own thing. But I think, yeah, definitely believing in, believing in oneself. I think that's massively important. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for your time um, and um, in, in enormous success over the over the coming months. Thank you, Helen Davis Parsons of Dormy Care Communities. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.